on a peninsula east of Lagos, 30,000 workers are employed on a project that holds out the promise of transforming Nigeria's economic fortunes. It's here that Aliko Dangote, Africa's richest man, plans to spend more than his net worth of 13.5 billion US dollars building one of the world's biggest oil refineries. If he succeeds, he could end the irony of Africa's biggest oil producer importing $7 billion of fuel each year and instead see it meeting its own needs and supplying neighboring nations. For the first time in history, Nigeria will be the largest exporter of petroleum products in Africa. Then we are doing also petrochemicals. With the refinery, your question is, okay, why are we building a refinery? When you look at the entire sub-Saharan Africa, you know we have only two working refineries. One, it is in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, which has only 75,000 barrels a day. The other one is by Sasol in uh, South Africa. But majority of all these countries, almost all the sub-Saharan African countries, they don't have refining capacity. So all of them, they export their oil, but they import uh, products. So we realize that majority of the foreign exchange spendings of Nigeria goes to petroleum products imports. The collapse in the oil price and Nigeria's poor track record on industrial projects are significant risk factors. Yet Dangote's bet has the potential to revolutionize Nigeria's economy with the operation of this project alone adding $15 billion or 2.5 to Nigeria's GDP. The project could employ more than 70,000 people when operational. The complex is Nigeria's largest ever industrial project and it boasts a distillation column for separating crude oil into various fuels at different temperatures that is the largest of its kind in the world. The 650,000 barrel per day refinery is just part of a $15 billion petrochemical complex that will also house a gas processor and the world's biggest plant for ammonia and urea which is used in making plastics and fertilizer. Nigeria has previously tried twice to process crude without much success. Its four state-owned refineries opened in the 1970s, ran at a fraction of capacity before they were closed in January 2019 for a river. An initial attempt by Dangote to enter the refining business failed miserably. In 2007, he bought one of the state plants only to see that privatization swiftly reversed by a new government. Nigeria's economy heavily relies on crude oil export and earlier efforts to use industrial development as a way of cutting the country's dependence on oil have mostly fallen short. Nigeria has tried many times to diversify from oil, but in vain. The country sank $5 billion into the Adzaokuta steel mill project, but it never went operational. Even for Dangote, who has built a business empire that includes cement factories around Africa and owns assets ranging from sugar mills to salt refining facilities, the petrochemical complex is ambitious. Nigeria will soon become the biggest and only exporter in sub-Saharan Africa for the first time, Dangote said in March. And we are not only exporting, we are exporting big time. Fertilizer exports alone will generate about $2.5 billion in revenue annually, he said. The company has opened talks with oil producers for the supply of crude to the refinery, although it hopes that within two years of beginning operations, as much as 100,000 barrels a day will come from two oil fields it bought from Shell, Dangote said. If Aliko Dangote, the billionaire businessman behind what even he calls his crazy $15 billion project, can pull it off, 
he will go down as the continent's John D. Rockefeller. And once he's built it, he intends to treat himself to a small indulgence. He'll buy Arsenal, his favorite football club. cost of 10 billion US dollars in what is billed as one of the largest and most ambitious transport infrastructure projects in Africa. The first phase of the project, which spans 470 kilometers from Mombasa to Nairobi, completed at a cost of 3.3 billion, while the second phase, from Nairobi to Naivasha, another 120 kilometers, has also been completed at a cost of 1.5 billion US dollars. On the other hand, phase 2B of the new railway from Naivasha to Kisumu, a distance of 270 kilometers, is set to cost 4 billion US dollars. Benin, a French speaking West African nation, formerly known as Dahomey, is one of Africa's most stable democracies. It borders Nigeria to the east and Togo to the west. The economy of Benin remains dependent on subsistence agriculture and cotton. Cotton accounts for 40% of Benin's GDP and roughly 80% of its exports. Benin's economy increased by 6.7% in 2019, mainly as a result of an increase of export of cotton, pineapple, and cashew nuts. Life expectancy in Benin was at 62 years in 2019, while literacy rate in Benin was at 40%. Only 14% of the country's population can access internet in 2020. 